It will help. I don't to put myself on mute. I've got my new mic. So if it's too loud, let me know. I can turn it down. Because at the moment, it is on the high setting. So, just let me know. Oh my God. I had such a hectic day yesterday. And then I'll come back, come back online this morning. And it's like, oh my God, the crazies have come out. The crazies have come out. I did a little bit because I couldn't sleep, so I got up online. But it was just crazy. You got one guy stating he got the bastion, and Sebastian didn't want to go back to his mom and stepdad, and that this guy would only speak to the father come out that is it wasn't the fact it was another woman and her boyfriend and the guy who it was who's now no choosy didn't even know nothing about it knew nothing about it so it was a part they just they, apparently this person was after bitcoins from what I could understand, I don't know about bitcoins, I don't know how it works, so I don't even want to go into that part of it. And then I'm on a live, I'm watching a live, well, it wasn't a live, it was live at the time when it came out. But I was watching this TV today, and um, they're just going through the case. In the beginning sort of thing. And hold on, I've just got to check something. Hold on. Let's just move just down. Oh, I've turned it right down. So if there's an echo, let me know. Hang around. See, getting these people wanting to message message to Seth, it's important. And this one message that email that he got, he read it. And he sent it straight away to Seth because he thought it was, he doesn't know yet. It has not been looked into. Probably just has been by now because as you can imagine, Seth is up and his PI is on to it. Uh, but I'm, uh, I, I won't know anything until I see Steve Rev again, which will be normally while I'm sleeping. So I never get to say, see a live of his unless I stay up all night. <laughs> but you know, um, so some links, tips were coming through that way, and I just think people aren't trusting the TBI to send the links, the tips into the TBI or law enforcement. That's just the impression I get because there's loads of people coming up with tips today. And he's going, look, best place to send him is TBI or law enforcement or the PI, right? But I just don't think they trust TBI or law enforcement. And to be honest, I wouldn't. I'd rather send it to Seth because at least then he knows about it. And, he, and if it isn't dealt with, he can say, why isn't this being dealt with? Why isn't this being looked into? So, but please let me know if there's a, an echo. It shouldn't be. I've turned it right down. And I've actually turned my headphones down. It's so loud. But the volume on the mic itself, I put is 
high. As high as I can get to. I can't get any louder. Anyway, so I don't know what's happening. I really don't. I don't want the loonies to go away. But that's not going to happen. You're going to get these people and say, I know where Sebastian is. I know where he is. I'll only speak to such and such. You know what I mean? Well, I know it's going to a high uh, reward, but there's $3,500 reward so far. So if you know anything about Sebastian, that can lead to his... Uh, uh, in getting finding him and bringing him home, then give the law enforcement or TBI tell them you'll get that three thousand five hundred. Even though I think it could be a lot bigger, but I know Seth said a couple of weeks ago it's not because people said how could they add to that reward, and he did give them the details, but then. About a week later, he come back and said, do not send any money into that. I've got to go and speak to that lawyer because there was something happening and he didn't know what was going on. And I haven't heard nothing else since then. I might try and get in touch with Pascal's show because I know he talks to Seth. See if he can find out anything. I might email him. Or even T Rev. So, there's a guy on YouTube. I don't watch him normally. Right. I've watched one or two of his, but not many. But first of all, I want to show you this. Right. And... Just something I was watching earlier on, on a Facebook page, I shall say, okay? Sharing. And it's not the first interview they did to news. can't remember who it was now. And we caught her in a duper's delight, yeah? And I knew there was another part where there's a duper's delight. The same video. The same video. Watch. And I'm going to start it from the beginning. Oh, well. I've got my wife. I don't know why he walked out that door. In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers' yeah, father and mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February 26th. Please tell me you saw that. Right, I'm going to play it again. Okay. We see the Jeep. 2024. When Sebastian Rogers disappeared. Um, that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he said, Night, Mom, I love you. For, um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers. Look, watch his face. Watch his face. Rogers first statements of what happened the morning of February 26, 2024, when Sebastian Rogers disappeared. He died that, like, little, just moved his lips that little bit like a smile in his lips. Because she done it to me, then he's shaking his head, oh, no, no. Then he just sits there and he's got this smirk on his face. 
then all of a sudden it goes into a little smile on the ends. It just comes into a little smile at the ends of each. Um, In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers' stepfather and mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February 26, 2024. Sebastian. Right. And I must admit, it was his that caught me the first time. When I first watched that interview, that got me the first time. That bit of a smirk on his face at the end. Right at the end. It wasn't until I've watched it about six times that I noticed the little smirk she gave. Now, you get a lot of people asking, what are your thoughts? What do you think happened? Well, apparently the PI said she spoke to law enforcement. I don't know if it was yesterday or when. She's seen the video of Sebastian bringing out the trash. Right? However, when Seth seen it, he said he couldn't make out whether it was Sebastian or not. It was too grainy. It was too dark. And all that. So we couldn't make out if it was him or not. But the PI said, I said to tease him. So, okay, we go on that point. That Sebastian did come home. I was still saying, yes, he came home. But he'd had such a busy day. Busy day for an autistic lad. He got up in the morning. He was like doing video Time, uh, what do they call it? Uh, when you video calling family members or whoever, right? They went and picked up his niece and his aunts, they went to BJ's, which I've just found out is somewhere else you can go to eat, and it's very expensive, quite, can be quite expensive. I don't know that I, I don't, we don't have BJ's over here. And then they went bowling. Whether they played the game of bowls, we don't know. They might have just been playing on the other machines, the other gaming things in there. I don't know. And then after that, they went to dinner at the steakhouse. And you've heard me say it before, so many different sounds, smells, uh, the noises, how busy it would be, it would be too much, way too much. It would go overstimulate him, right? So I think he's come home and he's put the trash out and I think he's had some sort of argument with his mum. Allegedly, I will say, allegedly. Or anyone comes saying, oh, you've accused you of this. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, allegedly, in my opinion, he's had some sort of argument. He's foul. And that's where she said, that thud, she says, comes from. Right? He's hit his head. Not to the point where it knocked him out. Right? Because they said, after he took the trash out, they're seeing his, a short while later, they're seeing his bedroom light come on and then his bedroom light go off. Right? And, you know, I think he found, he bumped his head, thought nothing of it, nothing of it at all. He's gone into bed, he's gone to sleep. Then the next morning she gets up, he goes to wake him up, and this is what sticks in my head all the time. When she says, 
I went and woke him up. I went and woke him up and he was gone. Well, how can you wake someone up if he's not there? Right? So I think he's passed during the night. And that's what she meant. She went in to she went in and woke him up, but he was gone. He's gone. Just you know what I mean? And that's when she's panicked. I then think she's got on the phone to Seth, who's like three and a half hours away. Right? And um She's then put him in the back of her car because at first she didn't say she drove around. She said she went in. It wasn't in his room. I looked around the house very quickly. I looked in the kitchen. I looked in everywhere. Everywhere I could think of, I looked. He wasn't there. I phoned his, uh, Chris up. He gave me a few other ideas where to look. We looked. Pardon me, I've got hiccups. We looked there, and then he said, hold on. And that's when he said, they said, they did the three-way phone call. Right? But he put her on mute. He put the mother on mute. So she could hear them. But they, they couldn't hear her. Right? She's driving around. I think she's driving around because there's a rumour as well, allegedly, all this is just my opinion. It's not true. It may never have happened. It's just what I feel. My opinion. So please don't come at me. Everyone has their own opinions. Allegedly, the CP's mother's car was seen on a road somewhere. I can't remember what the name of the road. I reckon she's met up with her. And she's took him somewhere, right? Maybe back to their house, put him in the camper, I don't know. Right? Um, because then about, by what, 7, 7.30, the mother-in-law was at her, their house. By the time the police got there at 7, apparently, the mother, mother-in-law, Kathy is her name, was at their house. So she didn't, didn't have a lot of time. She literally had from about, what, say, um, say, ten past six, quarter past six, to meet up, do the exchange, Katie, Katie makes her way home then for the police, Kathy goes her way, does whatever she has to do, and then comes over, making out probably she got a phone call from Chris to say, this has happened, and all this lot. You know what I mean? Follow me. Just follow me. It doesn't have to make sense. Just follow what I'm saying, if you can. And that's how the body was took, got out of the house. And that's why, if they did do any forensic testing, there wouldn't be any blood. Because he didn't hit his head to the point where it caused blood. It just knocked him out. Kind of a bit of uh, concussion, you could say. And that's when he went to sleep and he passed. And that's when she realised in the morning and panicked. Instead of just saying, no, if that did happen, she could have quite easily found the police up. The, the uh, EMR people, emer emergency medical people. And explain what had happened. Explain to them how he had this fluid on the back of his brain. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. But that's just my theory, my opinion. There's others who say he, doesn't, he didn't come home that night. And the thing is, there's a big if and but as well about the clothes he's wearing that night. Right? Now, 
I know Seth messaged TBI about this, and apparently they wasn't happy with him. They wasn't happy with him. They wa don't know if it's because he was on a live when he done it. I don't know. But he asked a legitimate question. Have you got the clothes that Sebastian was wearing Sunday night? Legitimate question. They could have said yes or no. Right? But again, they, did, they had a, a little moan at Seth about it. I think, the thing is, I don't think they did have his clothes from Sunday night. And it made them look stupid. Can't... And to be honest with you, that isn't hard with the TBI, I don't think. Because it's a complex case. Again, as I said, the complex cases, TBI don't know what they're doing. Look at some of my new child wells. That's three years now. They're not even looking for her. You know what I mean? They're just waiting for someone to come across some a body somewhere. They really are. And then they can say they, they solved the case. And it won't be the TBI solving this case. It will be... Um, I think with Sebastian and Summer, it will be someone out just walking the dog. If Sebastian isn't found alive, it'll be someone out just walking the dog that comes across the body. Right? So, but when you think, you got to think, if Kathy did take little Sebastian back to theirs and hid him somewhere on their property, did the police go to their house straight away and check their property? Doubty. Why would I? Sebastian wasn't at their house. Sebastian never stayed at their house. So why would I check their property? Hi, Samantha. Thank you for the green hearts. Is my sound okay, Samantha? Because I've got a new mic and I just want to make sure it's okay. But, um... Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to take my headphones off a bit. I don't need my headphones on while I haven't got a video. Um, so, I doubt if they could check the mother-in-law, the mother-in-law's and stepfather's house straight away. And don't forget then, two days later, they went on a trip in the camper van, so far cross-country, then they caught a private plane to Alaska. What's saying Sebastian wasn't in that trailer van of theirs? And they maybe got rid of the body somewhere along the way. Right? So I think that route needs searching. They need to go the whole of that route they took to, to wherever they caught their private jet, that route needs to be checked. And that's a lot of land you're looking at now. A lot of land. Right, so I'm going to show this again. I don't know if Samantha's seen this. But this is one of the very first a clip, a short clip from their first interview there. <laughs> Deep a smile. He did. <laughs> um, he said, Good night, Mom. I love you. Or, um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. In today's video, we take a look at Sebastian Rogers, stepfather, and mother's first statements of what happened the morning of February 26th. 
Then at the very end, there's that little smile on Chris's face at the very end. Deepers delight. And I'm just about to go and kill my cat. Hold on. Oh God, you never search up that cat. Follow her across. What areas have been have not been searched? Well, did you ever see that video by Nick Berries? Uh where he showed you the I'll try and find and shows you the he's talking to that other guy who's in charge of the search. Right. Uh, where is it? No, no, no. I'll pull it up. And it shows a large area they searched. Let's have a look. But it covered the, a hell of a large area. Oh, is it on his Facebook page? I'll have a look. It might be on his Facebook page. Um. Ah, uh -uh. this is it. Right. Ah. Uh -huh. I'm going to stop it first and take it back. Right. Right, we'll see you on this map here. Uh, follow up. Scary, scary, serious Rex. <laughs> I love that name. I love it. Right? But this shows the map. It talks to... Um, it's inside the operations in some of the county. Okay. No. And Widener, he's the director. It's the first time we've been allowed in here to take a look and to show you, Ken, and maybe you can explain just how much searching has been done for Sebastian Rogers. This is what. So this is a master map. This is a compilation of every day. Um, so we've got day one uh, through the end. And, and we can put layers on here, but this is every everything that has been searched to this point that we have tracked. Hundreds of individuals involved with the search, checking everywhere. You see the different things on here where you big pond, the beanie found, uh, knocking door to door, covering the whole area over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And were you able to find any sign of Sebastian? No, we, and we've had close to 1500 searchers uh, we've got 1,350 documented, and then we've got um, additional people. I'm sure we don't have documented in, in the, on the career side, on the on the uh, trained public safety side, and uh, thousands of miles of search ops. The first two days, we logged 2,000 search miles. We haven't had time to extrapolate all of this to get a, a total, so it's, it's probably going to be 10, 12,000 miles searched. Bottom line, though, even as we sit here now, 
the search continues. The search continues. And you have hope that perhaps oh, Sebastian yeah. could still be found alive. Yeah, yeah we're not. We're not, we're not stopping. We, uh, we're, we're working on leads. We're working on information from TBI and the sheriff's office, and we got teams on standby ready to go right now. And uh, no, we, we are not stopping. Yeah. Well, Ken, thank you, Ken Widener, director of EMA here, and clearly this search does continue. The hope continues, but we wanted to give you a look at exactly all that's been done to this point, and it is quite a bit. All right, Snick Barris report. All right, hold on. Let's just get on to that. Right, so that's the area, as you can see on that map there. It's a big area they have covered. By And I should say, this is where he lives, because if you notice the dark and they've worked the way around, five miles, wherever, around, you know what I mean? So, it's a big area. But hold on. I'm just going to pull up the map now. Right, let's just get rid of this. That's, that's where Sebastian leaves, right? Now, just down now is massive green land, right? This has all been searched. All this has been searched. All this. In fact, you know when they did that search a couple of weeks ago, over two days, that's where they focused their efforts again in here. They was in here, and they was up by the school as well, round by the school somewhere around right here. So two weeks ago when they done that, well, three weeks ago, you could say, yeah, they did that ever two day search. That is where they searched again. All this area. And I believe all ran by the school. So. I understand where you say most are not directed at finding Sebastian. You know what I mean? Because I, I, there's a lot I don't watch no more. I don't watch them because they're not, as you said, they're not focusing on the search for Sebastian, and they're into the a lot of them are kind of like, oh god, oh god, just got to sort my headphones out. A lot of them are into the drama, drama. No drama on here. No drama on this page. You want to start drama? I'll show you the door. But no, this is the area. They have searched, as you can see in that. Right. On here. Um, I'll see if I can just go. Come on. This is Ken Widener. He's the director. It's the first time. We've been allowed in here to take a look and to show you, Ken, you've checked big ponds, a beanie found. Uh, uh, so, but you can see on that map, it's a big map area. Most from the house and the three circles are five miles. Outside of those circles. There is a big area they covered, and this is what I can't understand. If they've searched all that, why is there no sign? Nothing. A thread of his trousers, a thread of his shirt, maybe caught on a bush, a bush somewhere. Um, his bare foot. Could he have cut himself? 
And there's a child up, well, I said living right, I used to walk barefoot all the time, right? I've always been told up by my mum, put your shoes on, okay mum? And I'd walk out the door, get to the top of the room, and my shoes would come off, and if I had my, say I had my uh, trainers on, I'd tie the laces together to the, each other, and just swing them over my shoulder, I'd carry them over my shoulders. If I had flip-flops, I'd carry them in my hands, right? So I was, I was used to walking barefoot, so I could walk over sticks and stones and whatever. But Sebastian, he wasn't used to walking barefoot. He didn't go out the house barefoot. So he's not going to get very far before a stone goes in his foot or a branch or a twig or something. And round here in the UK, I wouldn't advise no one to walk barefoot around here in the UK. Not nowadays. Too much glass everywhere. Way too much glass. You know what I mean? So. But yes, all that wooded area within five miles, as you can see in them three circles there. It's five mile circles each one. Right. And some are overlapping the others and everything. So it's a big, big area. And they've searched outside them areas, if you can see. They've searched all that. But nothing. This is why this is case is so... Hold on, we just got to get a call. So puzzling. So I'm not used to having this mic right in my face. So it's just puzzling. And I said, it's getting to the stage now where we are getting the crazies coming out. Right, which you will have. You'll have all these crazies coming forward. I know where he is. I've got Sebastian. You give me this much, I'll give you Sebastian. I'll tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you a fist to five, shall I? I'll knock you out and then I'll, t I'll just take him. Because I wouldn't, you know what I mean? They're just crazies. And they're wasting, and like people are saying, well, shouldn't the PR tell the police? Well, to be honest with you, I'll check it out first if I was a PI, right? Get the information I needed first. And then I'll inform law enforcement and say, look, I've made contact with this person. I'm going to meet up with him, right, at this time, at this place, and have the police with me there, even if it was undercover police. Unmarked police cars, whatever. Just so that she wasn't on her own. But otherwise, it could just be wasting police time and taking them away from something that is quite urgent. May not have nothing to do with Sebastian, but there's other cases going on. It's not just Sebastian the police are working on. I don't know if they've got ever missing children, I don't know. But... There's other cases they have to deal with. There's other home invasions or robberies or you name it. So they can't just stop all that just to look for a child. If you know what I mean? Even though it doesn't sound right, you think, oh, no, a child comes first. So if I was a PI, I'd get all the information on you first, and if then it came out that like, this is just some crazy. I'd inform the police because he needs to be arrested. Yeah, I know. Um, there uh, wasn't any other lad who was just like Sebastian, but a bit older. Wasn't he from that area? But there are other children in Tennessee gone missing in the summer moon, Utah Wells. There was another lad the other week that went missing, but luckily he was found. Um... This is what I mean. Most children who go missing are found within a few days, a day or so. So those who aren't found within, what, a week at the most, five days at the most, I'd say, there's some not sitting right, in my opinion. But if there's any case you want me to look at, just message me. I'll put my email account out for you. I'll get it. I'll pop it in chat. 
Well, that's it. I'll put it on the bottom. So scrolling along, along the bottom. If you've got any cases you'd like me to look into, let me know. Now, I'm going to stop Sebastian's one. There's no way I'm stopping this. But, um, as I said, there are other cases that need looking into. Get to my screen yard. Is that a little girl that's missing from that area? I haven't heard of a little girl. I'll tell you, I'll have a look in a minute. If there's anyone from that area, I'll have a look on TBI's site, Facebook page. Oh, I'm just going to put my email address up as a banger. Okay. Gmail. What am I doing? Okay. So I don't know about, but I'm going. I'll just go and have a look now. Um, because, and I'll tell you who else is good at getting the information, finding anything out about missing children. Trev Todd, Trevor Lee, not T-Rev. T-Rev and Trevor Lee are two different people. TBI investigation, let's have a look. Um, about 11 missing children. She's been found. Uh -huh. Oh, my, that's some old much. Um, Tennessee, five days ago, a young girl went missing in the mid south area. 15 year old girl with health conditions. Is this the one? <clears throat> well, Riley Strain is from. It wasn't from Nashville. He was visiting Nashville, but his case is still open because his parents aren't happy with it. They're not happy. It's like the police just thought, "Well, we found the body. No suspicious circumstances. Case closed." But the parents are not happy with that. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be either. You know what I mean? He was found in a river with just his shirt and his boxers on. No shoes, no trousers, no wallet, no phone. You know what I mean? That is... I haven't been covering that one. But I know there are some YouTubers out there covering it. And there are some good YouTubers out there covering it. Um, who's a good YouTuber I know who's covering this case? Oh, I'm not sure if the Pascal show is covering it. Is this a girl that you're wrong about though, follow, follow off to cross, this one? Because it says here, 15 year old girl with health conditions missing, TBI says. Let's see what it says about this. Uh, 
I'm glad she's been found safe. Good. That's what we like to hear. Right. We like to hear when children's been found safe. They found 11 missing children located in the Nock area two days a while ago. Shut up, phone. Um, for God's sake, I might turn my phone off. I can't turn my phone off because my son might be trying, might need to get in touch with me or my daughter. They can't get in touch with me, they panic and then I have them kicking my door. Sorry about that. Hmm. No, no, I haven't seen anything on here. No, anything on here is normally. But to have time, he picks up on all the new cases of any missing children. Right? So, missing for a while now. Would that be someone who knew child wells? She's been missing three years now. That is one case I do not want to get into. <coughs> <coughs> You think this is like going down? You think this case is like a rabbit hole? Some of them in Utah Wells. Whoa! You start looking into that case and you're being dragged down a rabbit hole. Head first. You know what I mean? Because there's so many twists and turns and so many lies. So, so many lies coming out on that case. But I've not heard of any other little girl missing. I haven't heard anything local. Um, let's see if I can find it on here. TBI. Right, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. West Tennessee, Joshua Javine, no, 2024, Leslie Ewald, 2024, Susan Elan, 2024. Right, let's see what the sound is like because on the Facebook page they're not saying anything. <laughs> no, I can't see anything on there. So, um, I'll look into that. I'm done. I'll write it down. And I'll do some checking tomorrow. Right, she's five years. How old is she, little girl? Five. Been missing for a while now. Right. In the same area. In Hendersonville. Been missing for a while. I'll put it there. Oh god, I've got to get me back. Oh god, hold on. Oh god. Hold on. Yoga. My laptop was just about to die on me. 
Go on, me. Um. Do you know how many years ago she's been, how many years she's been missing? She said, I can, it helps when I do any research. I can punch in. I'm a serial killer. I don't know about a serial killer. But then again, there is a lot of children missing. So... Uh, and you have you, know, you we have heard of serial killers working over years and years and years and years. So it's not a uh, a dismissive, but I think they have to look on each case as um. Uh, they have to look at like. What, how oh, how she went missing or where she was when she went missing? Was there anything going on when she went missing? Was there any strangers in the area? Pedos, you know what I mean? But I've written that down and I will do some research into that tomorrow. Okay? And when I find some out, I'll, I'll give it a talk about on here, okay? I might email Trev time for that, see if he knows anything about that. I'll just say to a little girl who's five years old, been missing for a while now. Is she in this, I just need to know, is she in the same area though? Of Sebastian. But, I don't know what your views are, but I've just, I've said what my views was. Anyway, what I was going to do was, I don't know if you've seen, You've heard about the lights, yep. You've heard about the lights. All right, let's have a look. Now, as I said at the beginning, I don't watch it, a lot of these. The last time I have watched. Right. And you don't do long videos. You keep them to the point. You know what I mean? I think the longest I've seen you do is what? Well, 25 minutes, half hour at the most. Yeah, I think the longest I've ever seen him do is half an hour at the most. But he keeps them short and to the point. Right. Now, I'm going to show you this video. Hold on, hold on. Let's just get back to the beginning. I've still got questions on this video. Even if he tells us what he knows. Oh, God, I've got to put my headphones on now. Right. I'll tell you something, we have immigrants coming over by the boatloads. Right? By the boatloads. And it's like, yeah, come here, we'll have you. We'll give you so much a day, so much a week, so much money a week. We'll give you a five-bedroom house. Yeah, don't worry. And um, I've noticed an increase towards children, a violence towards children and young girls, young teenagers. And I've noticed an increase in that. And a lot of them are immigrants. A lot of them are in hotels and all that lot. And they're not happy that they're in a hotel. What? You're getting your money given to you daily. 
I don't think I think they get one meal a day cooked for them. The other meals they have to buy themselves. But they get money for that, right? They get a free bed, a roof over the head, TVs, you name it, and they're not happy. They wouldn't be happy if you gave them a flipping mansion to live in. But there's my email number. If you need to give me any information, that's my email number. Okay? Just need to stop this one for me. Right. So, we're going to watch this and then I'm going to point out some what I, what I think. Please chime in with your thoughts. Okay? Please. Well, I've got to put the volume on. Not... Share and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that notification bell and then all videos. Hey, Reporter named Nick Barris put out a some surveillance footage in the Sebastian Rogers case. Uh, seems like a couple months ago now. And everybody went wild. Oh, my God, it's somebody with a flashlight running around. It's somebody with a flashlight. Look at that. Look at that. You know, it was interesting because you sort of trust what the media is putting out there. You know, what Nick didn't want to Please tell you. Being hard thing. Subject one Thank you, Samantha. Here. And by the way, law enforcement didn't make this where it says subject one and subject two. That's what the news channel did. Okay, where it says subject one over there on the right says. What this video is, is a video of a screen. So somebody's holding a cell phone and they're filming and their camera's kind of moving around a little bit. You know, it's not on a tri tripod where it's really still. So these things move around. So subject one isn't a subject. Okay. It's a fixed light. Now I communicated with Chris Proudfoot. We, we communicated uh, via voice on Facebook, and we spent a good 20 minutes or so going over what this was because he knows exactly where this is, and it absolutely makes sense. But before we do that, let's listen to what Nick Barris and one of the investigators uh, had to say. He says, let's continue to fully cooperate. Any evidence of foul play? We have... Not one, but we have absolutely no evidence. Home security from the neighborhood Sebastian suspicious light sources, which we've circled here in an area behind the teen's home. Since we first aired the video last month. And you know what's amazing is when you look at this video right here, see this little overlay right here? A YouTuber out there literally claimed that this was it, that, it, that this is the light right over the top of this and this image right here in the background of this whoever gave her this image um, used this exact background image because you can see the where the lights are down here this all matches up with this it's an absolute joke okay uh, then the next day they actually got uh, some footage from the actual camera and they didn't know what to do with it i mean it was absolutely shocking however they should have realized that when they had the video from the surveillance that it should have absolutely debunked the video that they put out the day before. But of course they leave that one up because it's getting good views. It's insane. You guys. So this right here, this, these dots right here are not um, flying in there. There's no blimp. There's no uh, helicopter. There's no satellite footage beaming down that somehow a reporter got really quickly. Ugly. Right? Maria. This is inaccurate information that was put out by an irresponsible YouTuber. All right, so here is the the footage that uh, Nick Barris put out there, and he's claiming that this right here is a um, a person. All right, so let's get back to this. Since we first aired the video last, but see how it's moving around slightly over here. 
That's because that's a handheld camera filming a screen. This over here is an object that's moving. Last month, authorities have said no evidentiary value. It is of no evidentiary value. Can you tell me what those lights are? No. Why? Because the investigation remains ongoing. And we don't know what we don't know. No evidentiary. Pardon me. No evidentiary value. But they can't tell us what those lights are. Hmm. My cats that make that sense. So, yes, it could play a role. So, as we just heard from one of the investigators right there, that uh, there's no evidentiary value. Now, when I spoke to Chris Proudfoot, he explained to me exactly what is on the video. All right. So, let's go down to the location. This is uh, Sebastian Rogers' home, the Proudfoot's home right here. And he explained to me that the shot is is from a surveillance camera right here on this building. We spent like 20 minutes. I kept sending him pictures of a map and he would say, yeah, this one right over here. See that right there? And he would describe. If you go back on my lights, when these, those lights first come out and we sp I spoke about it, I said the camera was this house there that's talking about. I said that was the house where the camera viewed those lights. I knew it. Fucking knew it. I have everything perfectly for me. So we were able to get it done. And it's a, it's unfortunate that other YouTubers didn't take the opportunity to talk to Chris Proud. What's ever done from day one is give us lies. You know what I mean? Well, I've got two grandsons. <coughs> One's on the spectrum, and he's so cute. He's, he's six years old, but he's so darn cute. But he's like, he's got his... <coughs> oh, <mate. coughs> you know when people say they have their personal space, right? He has his personal space. And you don't like people coming into me. So if you get too close, his arms, his hands come out in front of you, of him, and go, no, no, that's close enough. But he's just too cute. And then I've got another grandson, same age, six years old. Right? And he's more rambunctious. <coughs> Sorry. He's more rambunctious. He's more. He's not got any jars of back to him. He doesn't stop. He doesn't stop even when he sleeps. His arms are going, his legs are going. <coughs> Pardon me. He just does not slow down. And so he's on. Um, He's on the go 24-7, and he's very loud, very loud. Now, he'll go outside without shoes on. It doesn't bother him. But my six-year-old, the timid one, he won't go outside without shoes on. He's always had shoes on. Always. But my little one, as I said, he'll go outside without no shoes on. And, um... It's one of these kids that like to run around just while no clothes on. <laughs> yep, he'll strip off item by item within half an hour of walking in my house. He's running around in his birthday suit. And I'm going, so you put your snooty on? So you get your pyjamas on? No, nope, no. Nope. He likes, he don't like, I think he likes, the, he, he likes that feel of no clothes. Right, it's got no irritation on his skin. Right. And he hates um, to wear socks. He really does. But he does wear them, but he hates them. 
Uh, and what else is he not liking at the moment? He don't like the tags as well of the inside the T-shirts. So I've said to my daughter-in-law, just took, cut them out. Cut the tags out. Right? On his boxes, cut all the tags out of the clothing. You won't have that problem then. Right? And so, but it's totally opposite. You've got one is very quiet to me, and one is very loud and boisterous and wants your attention 24-7. When my other grandson, the Timmy Grog, he'll go off and play on his own. You know what I mean? But Ellis has got to have your attention constantly. There are times where he'll go and have his, what we call his quiet time, where he'll go and lie on the bunk bed with his tablet or things like that. But what we have found with both the grandkids, right, and we have tried and tried and tried everything, everything. We can get them to go to the toilet phone number one, but they won't go to the toilet phone number two. Right? So they, and his mum has said, oh, we've got them, like pull-ups. And he's gone like a day and more without doing a poop because she's making out she's got them. She hasn't. She's got them there. She's wanting him to go to the toilet, but he just will not sit on that toilet. I've tried putting the footstool there so his feet aren't, aren't dangling. I've tried doing that. I've given him his tablet so he can sit there with his tablet while on the toilet. He won't sit on the toilet. He'll sit there for number one, but he won't sit there for number two. So we do give in and we do have to give him the a pull up eventually because but it's not so bad. It's mainly like one a day. Right? Maybe two a day if he's not at school. Right, but it's not the point. We should, we need to be getting him on the toilet now. So, it, Alice, who comes to mind, he's got a three year old sister. Now, she's going on the toilet for both one and twos. So, uh, I'm going to see if he'll go on the toilet now. So, look, if your sister can do it, you can do it. You know what I mean? Nothing to be scared of. But I don't think he's scared. It's just that they don't have the. Uh, what's that word I'm looking for where it's not happening quick enough they haven't got the patience to sit there for like five minutes there, there's time span is losing runs out right so after a couple of minutes oh well I'm doing a poop I'm getting off and they got off the toilet I tried you gave it what a minute you know what I mean? But that's the only problem we have at the moment with them both, is that neither of them will use the toilet for a number two. And we've tried everything. So we're just hoping that as time goes on, and they get a little bit older, they'll think about it and think, well, all my friends are doing it at school, you know what I mean? So, what was that, uh, Samantha? Let's have a look. I'm going to take my thing again. Where's that? It's my thing there. I like it. I can put that back up again later. If anyone needs my email, I can always put it back up. Uh, uh, chats. I also watched that Sebastian may have been suicidal climbing in the trash after the statements made at school. But I think they searched that. Right? Right. Answer to this one first. Christopher Proudfoot and his family are friends with law enforcement in Tennessee. They probably are. Because they've got a lot of businesses, don't they? They run a lot of businesses and things like that. So, I think they are well known with law enforcement for that reason. Uh, what was the other question? Let's have a look. I also worry that Sebastian may have been suicidal. Well, you see, 
I wouldn't say he was suicidal. That is something that he's been taught. Right? To him, that's just natural. Right? And that's why he said to his friend, throw me in the bin. Go on, throw me in the bin. Because to him, that is nat natural. Right? And, um, because I think as a punishment, like, we've all, I, I don't know if you've said it, but I've generally gone, like, my little ends, but my, my kids were little, and my grandkids were very little, and I could pick them up, now they're too heavy for me to pick up. I go, okay, what bin shall I throw me? Right, and they go, no, 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 and I go, do you really think I'll throw you in a bin? Get out of here. Right, and uh, then they'd laugh it off because they knew I was joking then. Uh, Maria, I don't know about that. Someone debunked that, said she doesn't work for the police. I read something the other day on a Facebook page. Someone saying, I wish people would stop saying that his sister or sisters work for the police. She does not, they do not, or she does not work for the police. Don't know how true that is. Apart from phoning up some your county sheriff's office and asking, which I'm not going to do because it will cost me the world. I'm in the UK. Phone then. Nope. Not worth that much. And to be honest with you, would they tell you if you're working for them? No. Because they're not allowed to give out information like that. So you can't just phone up and say, it's doing such work for your department. They can't tell you. Unless you know someone personally who works there, who you could guess. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Why haven't they? Why haven't they checked getting landfills? Because that's where all their general waste goes, isn't it? The landfill they searched for Kentucky was for them big skips they have on the construction sites. That's where they take all the uh, rubble, bricks, uh, metal stripping, you name it, anything used in a construction site goes in those skips, and those skips are took up to Kentucky. Right? So, I've been saying this since I heard about it. I thought, hold on. Why did I go all the way up to Kentucky? Surely there will be more local than that. And I did research it, and it came up, Gallatin, like, oh, well, it came up with something else. But I can't find the landfills on the maps because I can't get the full thing. I'm going to have to try again. And once I do, I've, I've, the only thing I ever get is uh, the phone number for their head offices. I thought, I'm not phoning. I want to know where they take their rubbish. Some people might say it's too late now to take, to do a search there. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Never, never too late. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Put in a way without sort of trying to dig in and see if they can find something in there to be accusatory towards it. So there's the camera right here. Can you see that? It's filming down, and there's one car that is facing the garage, and then some other cars that are uh, parallel to the house, and a boat, and then this black truck right here. And if you look at the still frame from the actual video itself see here's those two lights up here and here's the fixed light over there uh you can see there's a car right here facing the garage and then other cars backed up like that and that might even be a boat back or a pickup truck and another pickup truck and if you go to street view again you can see that what happens here and there's five in this house over here He's saying maybe it's that one, perhaps the one up here. You know, I don't know. And maybe right there that's also a flat. I don't know exactly which one it is, but it's on this house. The 
be your being up here on a house. Let me go up in the air on the street view. And it's right here, the house with a square swimming pool. So there's two lights probably in the front here that you can see. And Sebastian Rogers' home is over here. Now there's that one that looks like it's going like this across the screen in the video. So the, uh, there is a road up here. And apparently it was a garbage truck that drove down the road. And right here, that's the Turner back video remember our everybody was like wow why the hold on we have dna who has dna follow of christ i think that as well samantha but then again what has tbi got to but then again look at their past record as i said this is a complex case Right, and when it comes to complex cases, TBI do not know what they're doing. This is why we are hoping and praying that the FBI do come into this. It's 59 days today, I think, or tomorrow, or 60 days tomorrow. So anything after tomorrow, the TBI, FBI can step in. So let's hope. I've signed that petition, right? And I've got it somewhere. My petition, please go along and sign this petition. I'm not saying it will help. You know what I mean? I'm not saying yes, it'll definitely help, but it won't do any harm. Right. I'm just trying to find that. Right. Please go along and sign this petition. As I say, if it'll help or not. When it comes up. You don't know. Well, there's the petition there. I'll put the link in chat, okay? Where's the Oh, God, it's a flipping long link. Oh. I'll see if I can get the short link for you. It's Oh God. Give me the short link, that's it. I'll put the link in chat. There is a tincture. If he came home from a restaurant, I mean, how many ways are there out of, that, out of his home? Not many choices. Trust, septic, picked up, taken away, walked away. That's not many choices. I, as I said earlier, I seriously believe um, something happened earlier on on this Sunday evening. Right, because of the way she said she heard your foot. Now that is the sort of word you you use when you like he landed with such a foot, or he hit his head with such a. You know what I mean? So 
I think she was in the room and she was having an argument with him. I think he was all hyped up from that day and she was having an argument, trying to get him to go to sleep and she'd had enough of it by now. Bear in mind, she's there on her own. Steph's not there. She's there on her own. And um, I'll put the link in a banger as well, Pia. For anyone on Twitter. Right. Show this. There's a link there if you want it as well. If you want Twitter, please go sign this. It may help, it may not. So, but this is to get the FBI to step in and take over. Because 60 days now and nothing, nothing. This lad, we are believed, we are supposed to believe. And now this is what I think they was hoping for. Because I don't know if you've been in that first interview as well. I remember it. I'll try and find that clip. Somewhere where uh, CP turned around and said he didn't expect it to take off like it did. No, he was expecting it to be just classed as a, a runaway. Right? And no one can go looking for him. Right? But one big problem there, mate. His name is Seth Rogers. He's not going, he wasn't going to let his, his uh, be put down as a runaway. Not when he knew his son wasn't. Not when, as a runaway, the. Exactly, Samantha. I've said this about my one grandson who I have on the weekends. I, if I have to go into the town, to the shops with him, so I've got five places to go to. One of them could be a f somewhere to go and get dinner. But I want to go to two shops first. I have to tell him one place at a time. One place. And then I can't just go in leisurely and walk around the shop. I have to know what I'm going in for. Right, so I can pick it up, get my size. If they haven't got my size, I walk straight back out. Right, and then I go on to the next. And then when I come out of that shop, I say, right, we just got to go into this shop. So, that shop. Go in, get what I have to get, come out. And then I say, right, let's go and get some dinner. We go and get some dinner. Then after dinner, I say, right, let's just pop into, I don't know, the boots. It's a pharmacist, right? it's a big shop. Everything, everything you want, perfumes, makeup, hair products, medicines, you name it, you can get it. And so I have to give him one thing. If I say, oh, we're going to go here, 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 forget it. Forget it. He's not going to do it because his brain is taking it in and think, what, what? I'm going, where? What are we doing? And he gets very confused. And with shops, you've got all different sounds, all different smells. You've got some shops that are really busy. You've got walkways that are really busy. You know what I mean? And I remember once there was a project. And they decided to walk through this arcade, shopping arcade, from the top end down to the bottom. Right? Thank you, I'm thinking, because all we heard was these clanging noises and drums going, and my grandson was, oh no, he's having a meltdown, total meltdown, and I thought, what are you, arseholes, I'm thinking, why can't you stay out the streets, stay out there on the streets if you want to protest, don't come into the shopping arcades. There's enough noise in a shopping arcade. With all, I'm not even like you walk past different shops and you got like the perfume shops and the shops with the smelly soaps and all that lot, right? 
and it's all these different smells and sounds. It's just too much for them. And I think he had, once he got home, he'd been overstimulated. His senses had. He wasn't prepared to go to bed. He wasn't ready to settle down because you've got to calm him right, right down. That's what I do when I come home with my grandson on a Friday. I've got him next weekend, right? We get home here, get to mine about one, pick him up from school about quarter past three. So we get home about four o'clock ish. From four o'clock till when he goes to bed, it's just chill out time. Calm him right down. Right? He'll go and have his bath. And then he gets out the bath. And then he'll want something to eat. So he'll have something to eat. But then, then because he loves water, he chills out a lot in the bath. He goes and sits in the bath again. Right? But he loves the shower. He loves to have the shower on. So something about the shower, coming into the bath, he loves that. And so he'll sit there. For, I've only been in my bath for like two hours and I've gone, Ellis, that water's cold. Oh, I'll just top it up with some hot water, Gran. And he, he empties the bath out again and fills it, puts the shower back on again with hot water and fills it back up again. And he'll sit there for hours. But if it calms him down, I don't care if he has five baths a day, if he keeps him calm and relaxed. He's welcome. He can live in my bathroom if he wants. After I look at the St. Jude's Chris works at. Not accusing anyone, but Sebastian deserves every own. Well, you really think the, uh, they would mind. The construction company would not like that because that would mean or construction work would have to stop. You know what I mean? I'm not going to like that. Even if it is for a child. But I don't know if they have. But then again, how would you have got Sebastian on there without being seen? Because you've got security all around that site. Right? You've got security on the site. You've got security around the hospital. We know that from when JLR was just walking up and down past his work site one night and his three cars were following him around. So much security around that site, I don't see how he could get Sebastian onto it without being seen. So, but it should be checked. I agree, it should be checked. Karen <laughs> Samantha. Love you, girl. Well, it should be checked. Every avenue should be checked. And I don't think it is. Christ's sake. You're asking them to check the grounds where it worked, right? They didn't even do a forensic check, a forensic search on the house. Hmm. Why is that? As Seth said, they haven't got the police will say, the law enforcement say, they haven't got any evidence to show, um, what is he? Proof of any criminal act. Yeah? Of course they haven't got any. Thank you, sir. Scary, sir. Scary, sir. I can't say your name. I'm just going to say Rex. Because I don't believe you're that scary. Bye. Um, they had because they've got no evidence because they didn't do no forensic um, search on the house. They didn't do nothing. They've done a search of the car and a search of the house. And the other thing is, why search the house ten times? Apparently, they've searched their house ten times. Ten times. What are they looking for? But apparently it's not a criminal investigation. Right. We believe you. Thousands wouldn't. But um, they've dropped the ball on this case so many times at the beginning. Because, as I said, I think CP and 
maybe we're hoping that they just take it as a runaway. Right? But because it was a upturned amber alert, they couldn't just take that as a runaway then. Right? And it was like, what? What is it they say about, you got to have, what was it they said about an amber alert? I'm going, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to just take that down. Uh, Amber Lur. What do you need? What? Because you have to have criteria met. You it won't let me get in because I'm in the UK. There's certain sites I can't get into. Yes, this child has fell through the cracks. Like people say, well, why did Seth leave him there for me? Have you ever thought perhaps Seth thought didn't want to take him away from his mother? You know what I mean? Perhaps Seth thought he should be with his mother. She gave birth to him. You know what I mean? He may not have liked what he's, what he's seen or heard before when they was living, wherever they was living, California or wherever. Right? But perhaps he's changed. And Sebastian was happy at home and everything was okay at home in his eyes because Sebastian wasn't telling him anything. And I know the grandmother was sworn to secrecy to not say anything to Seth, but I think she should have. I think she should have. But then again, if she had told Seth, that would have made Sebastian think, well, I can't trust no one. You know what I mean? I can't even trust my own grandma, because if I tell her anything, she's going to tell my dad. So I can see why she didn't. So it's just complex in this whole case. Anyway, what were they all with? Is this it yet? Yeah. 15 minutes long, not even that now. I know Samantha. Oh, what was that? Uh, I worked home cases as a nurse where mothers did not handle their special needs child well at all. As a matter of fact, most did not. I, I know. It's because when you have a child, you don't get a handbook. You're not taught how to be a mother. 
Really, you really aren't. You learn from your own parents, if anything. Yeah. So each mother tends to be so like how their parents brought up them, sort of thing. Yep. So, but when you've got a child with special education needs, it's like a curveball has just been thrown in. Oh my God, with this. This child won't listen to me. This child just has fits on the road. They'll lie on the floor and stomp the ground and scream and, and they can't cope with it. And because it's not, because they don't get a break from me, it's like, I'm just too tired. I can't deal with this. What am I going, what can I do? So in the end, they don't do nothing. They don't even ask for help. Right? Oh, I'm going, I'm going. What's this? Christopher Proudfoot's mother. Christopher Proudfoot's mother has a lot of props in the real estate. I said that as well. I said that. We don't know if he's in one of them houses. Right? I've said that as well. What's this one? From the beginning, Sebastian's case. Go, yes, Sam, you know what? Me and you are on the same path here. Because I said from the beginning, I was always told, I was watching a channel once. I can't remember if it was on TV or on YouTube. And it was about a retired detective. And he was talking about the cases he did. Right? Didn't say, mention the name of the case. It just said basically what they incurred. And he said whenever he went to a home, where there was a missing child, he'd look on it first as criminal. I think criminal happened in the house or outside the house, right? So we'd look at all that first, get all the forensics done on that. If that all come back clean, then you go, okay, the mother say, like this case, Sebastian, okay, the mother said, stop and walk out the house. Well, we know nothing happened in the house. There's no forensics saying anything happened in the house. That's all been cleared. But, hold on, he walked out the house. Okay. But, there's no, no scent for the dogs. So that would put a curveball on it. And I'd be thinking, okay, so apparently he's walked out the house, but no scent for the dogs. Okay. He don't like going out the house in no shoes. He left the house in no shoes. He's left the house in no phone, no shoes, no jacket or coat, no money. He just up, walked out the door and puff, poof, he's gone. So, um, I'd seriously be thinking, okay, we've got no evidence here to say there's something that happened in the house. But summer isn't right here because the child does, does not walk out the house and get leave no scent at all. Right? Apart from one child that picked up on a scent the same day. I Charlotte, you think that is suspicious? I don't. I don't. Don't forget, Seth has been on the go from day one. This is coming up to 60 days now. It's only in the last week, really, is I had to take a break. And that's why I've got two more PIs onto it, right? And uh, he's had to take a break because for the last 50-odd days, he'd been out there searching with him and another friend on their own for weeks this went on for. And then all of a sudden, groups of people started coming in and helping them. And... Hi, Elizabeth from Mississippi. Good to have you here. Good to have you. Right. So, he's had no sleep. Well, very little sleep. He's, he's not eating properly. Um, he was on medication for his shoulder, his neck. And apparently, someone asked him about that. 
uh, why didn't you stop the medication or stop it before you had your thing? And he said, I asked the polygrapher, whoever, however you call them, about my medication. And she, they said it would be all right for me to keep my medication on. Thank you, Elizabeth. Right? So, really, the pol polygrapher, whatever, whatever you call them, should have said, right, you're on medication? Right, we'll have to defer this until you come off the medication. And once you come off the medication, and once you've had, you're back on your sleep schedule again, and you're eating properly again, then we can do this test. He will get justice one way or the other, Samantha, because I'll tell you now, if I'm the only channel covering this in two years' time, I don't care, I'll cover it. I'll cover it daily if I have to for two years until this little boy is brought home. Be it two years, three years, four years, five years, I'll still be covering this case. I'll probably go to my grave covering this case. You know what I mean? So, but it really needs to be looked because TB, there's too many cases where TBI aren't finding young children. Too many. That's in Tennessee. That's TBI, Tennessee, BI, TBI. They're not finding a lot of children. And not just children, young teenagers and whatever are gone missing. They're not finding them. They just don't vanish. Right? Now I'm going to tell you something about this video. Right? This man here is trying to say that that house on the corner. This one, no. Right, this house on the corner on the other side managed to pick up the uh, lights, security lights off this house up here and uh, trash lights off the trash truck. Right? All over the back here, right up the top here. But that camera didn't once pick up Sebastian walking past him. So let's finish this. Sorry about this. Right, right, I leave a comment how that camera can pick up lights right over there, right over here, goes along there. Can't pick up a lad along with a little flash. Right, you tell me that. I don't think he does, but I know his mother has prop property, doesn't she? Or she's she does she's a real estate person. Sorry about that, Simone.
Do you know what? I wasn't even going to bring this video up again about the lights. Because I believe what Seth told us, it was a garbage truck. I thought, okay. I, I believe you, Seth. You're coming from Seth. I believe you. I don't believe a word CP says because he's lied all the way through anyway. He's lied about taking a polygraph. Why? Because on a Facebook page, someone said, have you and Katie took a polygraph? Right? If so, did what happened? And he's come back saying, yes, we both took a polygraph, we both passed. But then when he did the interview with Nancy Grace, Katie said she'd done the polygraph, he said he didn't. So, he lied. He lied. Right? Um, why did it take him so long to come home from work when he found out at 20 past 6 in the morning? That his stepson had gone missing. When he didn't start work till seven, right? He didn't start work till seven in the morning. Yeah, Seth's alibi is rock solid. The many cameras where he works, they have to have all these cameras because they, they're dealing with criminals. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. Right? That's why I said it's nice to admit CP you've got one friend. Because he's believing. See, he believes CP. No one else believes him, so what does that say? Right? What does that say when no one else is believing him, apart from his family and maybe some close friends? Which we haven't heard of. But it's just strange that that camera, pardon me, from that house can pick up lights up there but couldn't pick up a flashlight walking past at what? 3 30 in the morning? You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Does not make sense. And I've seen another video of it and. To be honest enough, it looks like the person, the second person, like a person standing down here, and the second person is walking through this little gully way thing. Yeah, I'm telling you, no, I haven't got it no more. Right? And so, with that camera, it's too low angle. So, how's it going to pick up the lights right up there? And Katie prob probably, Proudfoot probably doesn't even know him. Maybe it's Chris from Proudfoot. But why would they put him in hiding? I can't, I don't understand this. He was all ready to go to his dad's in May. When they broke up for the summer, he was going to go and move in with his dad. Right? Spend summer there and then go to school afterwards. He got him enrolled in a new school there. So, It doesn't make sense. It's going to tell. Seth isn't going to tell if it's not. Exactly. I don't... I believe what Seth says, but I'll... I've still got that nagging gag out. Right? At the end of the day, I don't care about whether it's a garbage truck or not. I don't care. At the end of the day, I just want Sebastian found. And... 
when you got people bringing drama into it and all this lot, I'm thinking, no, no. And I'll click off. I'll click off straight away. And then you've got people who do clickbait. New info. Can't miss. And I clicked on one once and I went, I was on it literally about three minutes. When I realised what it was about, I clicked off. I went, no, it's not new info. I heard this info three days ago, so this is not new info. Yes, he is a narcissistic person. It's his way or the heart. And that's something else with a, an autistic child, right? They've said themselves, when he gets, he gets something in his head, he's focused on that trail of thought, right? He's got to do it. He's got to finish what he started sort of thing. I do, I click on them and as soon as I find out I'm off, I will not have any, I just don't, because I've had, I've gone on channels and he said something about this or whatever, had this title, then we got, I sat there watching, I'm thinking, okay, so when's this going to, this information going to come out? Hi, Kim Fangy, Fangy, hiya, good to see you here. Right, exactly. I'm only a new channel. Hi, MG. I'm only a new channel. I've only been doing this, what, since February, the end of February? Just before Sebastian went missing, about a week or so before he went missing. So, this was one of my first, well, no, Elijah Vu was one of my first cases. Hello. I'm just saying it's SC, what's it? Right. So, but I will not have drama. MG knows that. Pump. No. No drama in this group. And if I say, like, my title was Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. CP has a friend, which he has. He's got this person here. Right. What's his name? What was his name? Uh, I can't even think of his can't think of his name but he's got he got a friend right and I could have gone yeah that's okay how's your mom MG hope she's still smiling Dave Carolina thank you Elizabeth Well, I remember when we was at school, right, we had, the boys would get the belt, or the cane, right, and if you walked along this corridor and you seen anyone sitting outside that headmaster's room, you knew there was heading for the cane, right, you knew it and you think, oh Christ, let's get out of here quickly, and you, you literally Going along that corridor away from me. Because you knew what the, what was heading towards them. And they knew as well. But then it was stopped. I think before I even finished senior school. Well, my secondary school. Right. So by the time I left secondary school, which was in 82. Was it 82? I can't remember that far back. Uh, it was literally coming to an end. I wasn't allowed to do that. Hi, Tara. Well, it's so nice to see you all in here tonight. So nice. But it's just a shame that out of all this, all that's going on, you're forgetting one person. One, they are forgetting one person. And if it wasn't for this one person, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be sat here behind us, in front of the screen, talking. And that is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Right? And if someone wants to give me information, I'll 
check it up. Why? Because ages ago, someone said that uh, put up on here, he'd been found. I went, what? What? So I'm scanning all of YouTube and I'm checking other sites, news sites, and all this lot. There was nothing. So I put it on one of the Facebook pages and no, he hadn't been found. It was something else. And I'm thinking, okay. Well, please subscribe. It would really, I'd really like if you subscribe because then you'd be back in my chat again. In my Tara, in my opinion, about his abuse, I was beating me about it, and I never used one of my children. Well, I told the story the other night about my mum. Right? Yeah, my mum was old school. Right? She's Scottish. She's born up in uh, up in Fife. Just across the river from where I live. And um her mother died when she was very when, when she was quite young. So she was the one bringing up her brothers and sisters and all that long. And she had a stepmom, but her stepmom wasn't very nice apparently. I didn't know her stepmom. I didn't realise it was her stepmom until she died. And then my mum said, well, she's my stepmother, not my real mother. I went, oh, oh, why? But she always seemed nice enough to me. But she probably aged as well and mellowed. Anyway, so um, when my two of my brothers were arguing one day, and I was coming down the stairs, and we had a, like a bend on the stairs. And as I come around the bend, my mum come out the kitchen, the hallway, and got these two great big feck off knives and said, if you're going to kill each other, do it right. And gave them each a knife, right, and walked away. I just stood down the stairs going, oh, my God, blood, blood. There's going to be blood everywhere. One of them's going to use that knife. And you know what? They just put the knives down and walked away. I thought, wow. Wow. And then there's every time that my brother, who you'd sneak off school, play truant. And this is when you had the uh, truant officers. Yeah. And you couldn't just walk around the arcades, shopping arcades, like they're doing nowadays. Oh, no. You had to be sneaky. You had to go down gully ways and little alleyways and go in areas of the park where, the, uh, where they wouldn't be checking. Well, one day, they phoned my mum up. My mum's at work, so she gets this phone call. And she was always home by the time we got home from school. Well, it's good to see you here first time. I'm glad to see you in here. But anyway, so she's coming from school. And my mum had, you probably know these if, you, if she was born in the 60s. Or before a twin tub washing machine, right? And um, you had your hose that you'd use from the tap uh, to fill up the washing machine with. And anyway, she filled the washing machine up and she's got her washing on. And my brother's coming from school and she's gone, How school go? Oh, same as usual. Eli said, so what did you do? And he didn't think, said, I was born in like 60, 66. And um, he's gone, what did you do then? And, he can, and before he could get anything out, she's got this rubber hose from the twin tub and she is whacking him with it. Oh, my Lord. I couldn't get out of that house quick enough. I couldn't find a corner to hide in. I really couldn't. But that's how we was brought up. And like my mum would have these mood swings. And if we walked in the house and we had like um we had two living rooms but we got nothing to one. 
And if we walked in the house and my mum was in a, a normal like a dining chair, sitting at the other end of the living room, with her arms folded as we walked in, we knew something had gone on. We'd literally run up them stairs, get washed, get changed, and back out again in 10 minutes. We didn't say hello, we didn't say anything, we just in and out, because we knew not to say anything to my mum. She was in one of them moods where if you'd spoken, if you just said hello, she just snapped your flipping head off. I went round once, after I got married, I went to visit them. My dad's in the living room. So I've gone in. Hi, Dad, how are you? Where's Mum in the kitchen? Yeah. I've gone through to the kitchen. All right, Mum. Oh, now you come and say hello. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could have come and say hello to me first. I'll go, oh, my Lord. What have I walked into? Thank you, MG, for putting that out there. But that's how I was brought up. But I never brought my kids up like that. I brought them up to have respect for their elders and people around them, right? Which they did have. But they was never cheeky to any of my neighbours. I was always getting glowing reports off my neighbours about my kids as they grew up. But, um... But I never brought them up with, like, giving them a uh, flipping carving yards to <laughs> do the job properly or anything. One of them is autistic and Sebastian is so growing on me. I think the reason this... I first heard about this case the Tuesday after he was reported missing. Right? And it was just by chance because I went on to Trev time. And I seen him. Exactly, yes, your word was everything. Anyway, so, and I was watching Trev Time, and I thought, you know what, this ca it just caught my heart straight away. Because it was what I was hearing, like, how he's autistic, and that he left the house in the middle of the night, with no shoes, no coat, no phone, no money. I'm thinking, an autistic child wouldn't do that. They have their, what they call their safe zones, their safe areas, like here, their safe, well, my whole house is a safe place for them, right? But if they want to go somewhere quiet and be on their own, they can either go in my bedroom or in their own bedroom. My mum's PT said she can tell I'm a... Generational curse breaker, I'll tell you that the most exhausting, the most rewarding to know, the, you know, the generations that follow you will be better for it. <laughs> I like Trev time, I do. So I heard about it, and that was on the Tuesday, so that would be the 27th. And my first live I ever done on Sebastian was on the Wednesday. The and I've done a live every night since. On him. Some nights it was shared with um, Madeline Soto. Some nights it would be shared with um, Elijah Vu. I think it's possible. It might be that one. One of those like camps. I think if he's alive. But he said that he had his PIs checking into it. But obviously his PIs weren't coming back to him about any info. Right? So he got rid of the first two PIs. I think he could be in one of these um, institutions, if he's alive. But I don't understand why they would do that. If they didn't want him at home, why didn't they just say, Seth, you really need to take him now? You know what I mean? We can't wait till the end of May. He needs to go. We, you need to take him out. We can't deal with this no more.
Hi, Robbie. No, I don't believe anything CP or KP says. Really? Alaska, a camping Alaska? Hmm. But didn't they fly up there in a private jet? And wouldn't it be um record who's on that private jet? So, they know where he is. I agree. They know where he is. Whether he's alive, we don't. They're getting, so, they could pass that probably quite easily. Because, did you kill your son? She could say no, because she didn't. Last time she seen him, he went to bed. Last time she spoke to him was about 10 o'clock when she heard a thug and told him to whatever it was she it was doing to pack it in and get to sleep. Yes? So that was it. He's gone to sleep. She's then gone to bed at 12, woke up at 6, he's not there. But it's just that niggly feeling that kid's coming back to me. What she said. And she didn't say it by mistake. I keep thinking about the Natchez place where here in MS. That's a very huge area. Mm. No, because the car would have been searched before CP got there. CP got, didn't get there till oh, half one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Because CP went to work at seven o'clock in the morning. And it's only because one of his workmates didn't like his attitude and asked for him to be removed from the crane that they took him off the crane and he stormed off the site at between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Hold on. Didn't you get a phone call at 10 past 6 sat telling you your grandson was missing? Didn't you phone the police at half 6, 20 to 7, reporting your stepson missing? What the hell was he coming to work for? Why didn't you just phone his work and say, I can't come into work. I've got uh, family problems back home. I need to get back home and sort out. I'll explain, I'll explain all later. Why can't you just do that? If he left him left on his own, 50th day did something for you, you see younger kids being victims, but then you have cases like fellow. Yeah, yeah. That was once, they are once, well, two sick mother effers. The reason now, yes, is I can put up, there wasn't at first. Exactly, they didn't want Sebastian. They could have gave him to uh, Seth. But yeah, they've got cameras up on their trailing. But they're not there. They're not at the trailer. I heard reports a couple of days ago that they're not there. Right? I think it was a PI actually who said it. She knows where they are, but they are not at the trailer. So. Yeah, but wouldn't they please have took photos of that, all those bite marks? Why would you have a camera on your camper? Ah, oh, because of everyone following them around, sneaking up on them. They can put one on the trailer, but they couldn't put one on their house. Yeah. If you had them in your head, something in your headlock, you, that is the part of the arm that would reach, would be there, would be the top part by the elbow, and down, that's where they would reach. So I agree with you, Tara, but sure, unless he had long sleeves on when the police were there, so they didn't see him. Yeah. Well, has, hasn't her company been at her house a couple of times now? So I've been putting up some cameras at the house. 
Yeah, I think they have got connections with law enforcement. I really do. And I think CP was hoping he would just be put down as a runaway missing child. Right, and that would be it. He said in the one interview he didn't expect it to go off like it did, or something to those words. Yeah, I, I see. And you know what? I've not been able to watch that full interview of Nina. Can't do it. I've seen clips of it. I just can't bring myself to watch it. Because the clips I've seen were bad enough, as they were, you know what I mean? I think Trev Time did a brilliant job with that interview because he gave her the platform to talk. From Seth's mum, Kate, since to her being unhinged when she was younger, no true. Chris and Kate took convincing to let Sebastian go with Kelly, Seth. I don't think she wanted to give Seth up. But I, don't, I also don't think she could deal with him. So, um, but I think the the whole law enforcement in Ken, Ken thing is looking at. I think it was the police force up in where is it? Summer Moon, Utah, Wells up there is corrupt. Look at the uh, one detective, his own son, where Summer Moon, Utah, li Wells, li his own son was up on um, child abuse charges. And his father, the, the deputy, whoever he was, had him living at his house. If that isn't corrupting off, I don't know what is. And then, and then, top it off, he only done 12 months in prison. I think Christopher Fred would come through on out the night quietly and took Sebastian Robert Rogers and took Se Sebastian Rogers to never sit here or never stay in harms. Really? Hmm. I think I would say the easy uh what's the word I'm looking for? Um situation is the best. I seriously believe he did come home. From that restaurant, unless unless they prove to or say you have not got the clothes that he wore and she cannot supply them, I will start. I will start now that he did come home. But you see, the thing is, right? She could probably deal with him because she was with him seven days a week, wasn't she? She had him from a baby. And she knew how to work with him, but it's Chris who was who demanded that he wore them pull ups, not Katie. Chris, Christ's sake, you know what I mean? I said earlier, I've got two grandsons, and they both wear these pull ups if they need a number two, they will not sit on the toilet and do one, but were uh, are not making them wear them all day. Yeah, Mr. Chris. Well, actually, if they can't produce those clothes and we find this out, then I'll say, okay, they can't produce those clothes. He didn't come home that night. I don't know about autistic children. Um, my grandson is on the spectrum. Uh, he can go out in the night time, right? He don't. So I can't say whether he likes it in the dark or not. And my other grandson who I have on the weekends, he don't go out in the night time, so I don't I can't answer that. Right, they've gone out in the night times like in their back area. Right? To, on fireworks, guy fork nights with their little fireworks and sparklers. But they're with the mum and dad. I know, I was gobsmacked when I heard that. 
If I give in the mother, it could be six for under. Well, I don't think there's one child be autistic or not would go anywhere without their iPad nowadays. Either iPad or phone is stuck to their hand. Yes, Robin. Oh, yes, they are very smart. Very smart. My two grandsons, they're good with their numbers. Very good on their numbers. Right? And um, we gave my grandson, this my neighbour, not my neighbour, the neighbour above them called Becky. They love her to bits. They call her Aunt Becky. And she's just throwing some easy numbers at my grandson the other day. And she's going, six plus four. And you go, ten. Give me something harder. So she go, twenty plus eight. Look at her, oh my God. I said, harder. He said, he goes. And so we have to go really hard with these numbers to push him. Anything. Like that, it's too easy for him. So off, just throws it off the top of his head. Now, even me, sometimes when someone says, what's 20 plus, I'm going 20 plus one. And I'm using my fingers now to add it like, and then I go, oh, 25, or oh, 28, <laughs> or 16 plus 6, 22. But I like to use my fingers. But my grandsons don't. They know straight off. <coughs> Sorry. Wow. Well, I'm thinking of getting for their bedroom because I've got a bedroom they have and they all share the one bedroom. So my granddaughter, I have to be careful because I've got a granddaughter. So I can't have it all boys. I have to have it with some girl in it for her. But I'm thinking of putting um on the one wall, taking these um canvases down because they've been up there now what two three years something like that taking them down and putting um, a world map up there on the wall right either by do it as a decal where you stick it on or just get a great big uh, picture of it and, and attach it to the wall I don't know yet, but I'd like to do something like that in their room. And, um, but then they also like, they like building things. Right? Now, I brought my grandson this little t this toy the other day, the other week. And rather than build what it was supposed to be building, oh no, he was building something totally different. I'm going to go, what are you building? That isn't what it's supposed to be like. No, I'm building this instead. And you build something else. It's imagination. Both their imaginations are wild. He sits when he's on a bus with me, he'll do news reports. And he make me film him, record it, and he'll go, he'll, news report, flash news report. Meteorite about to hit somewhere. Take cover! <laughs> I'm sitting there on the bus and I can see, hear people and I see people looking at me and go, carry on, sweetheart, carry on, what's happening now? And he goes on and his imagination is just wild. No, no he wasn't a large child, he couldn't have fought back. Not against Chris, not even against KP. She's a black belt in martial arts. <coughs> <coughs> well, they're both ex Navy. Right? They're both ex Navy. So they both got a good pension off the Navy, hopefully. Well, she does, unless he was what's the name? Kicked down. But they're both ex Navy. They both you know martial arts because that's what they're training on me. They're trying to mean some sort of martial arts anyway. And they do love their games. 
Yes. My grandson who visits me is Minecraft. Minecraft things. Anything to do with Minecraft or robots or uh, laser guns and things like that. And I sit with him and he'll go, strap yourself in, Gran. So I make out I'm strapping myself in. And then I play along with him and he'll go, it's only a game, Gran. I go, I oh, know. But because I start to play the game with him, he thinks I think it's for real. And I go, oh, no, I oh, know, it's only a game. I'm just playing with you. And he loves to do things like that. But no child could stand anything for a, a man like CP. He couldn't. No. They think he didn't mix with anyone. You know what I mean? Which is sad, because that's all he wanted for Christmas, was friends. How sad is that? That all he wanted for Christmas was friends. It's, it's just too... Come on, come on, come on. It's just so sad. Come on. Exactly, he didn't have his phone. Well, on his phone, he didn't have any gaming systems that we know of. But then again, TBI, well, you found that out as soon as checking his phone. His parents didn't encourage him. No? Now, I can understand, Seth, he did let him go on his gaming system, but he used his logging. I heard that. Tara, I heard Katie was MMA fighter, right, and um, anyway, I used to use Seth's logging, and the only people he played against were people Seth knew, and these people would phone up and say, would, would message him, and say, do you know your son's on your logging? Yeah, I'm sitting here right by him. So he's sitting there right by him while he's playing the game. He doesn't have the headphones set up for him, so he can't talk to anyone. Right? So he can't talk to anyone. That way, he knows then he's got... He's not going to be arranging to meet up with anyone. Katie chose KP over... Um, CP, you mean. Katie chose CP over her own song. I think that's disgusting, yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting either way. Right. So, my kids come first. He had a Nintendo Switch, but it wasn't one which was hooked up to the internet. No, his mum. But then someone said perhaps he learned how to hook it up to the internet. Uh, you don't know. But if he was going to run away, don't you think he would have took his phone, his Nintendo, his money that he'd been saving up in his bedroom, he could put some snacks and drinks in a bag, huh? and he would have put his shoes on if he's going to run away. He knew that where his mum's bedroom was, at, on the other side of the house, at the back end, his bedroom was at the front end of the house. His mother's bedroom was at the back end of the house, on the other side. His mother wouldn't hear him like that front door. Right? She'd probably hear that squeaking S on the back door, but he could have gone out the front door if he did, but he didn't, because there's no scent. People have been saying today, perhaps he put perfume on his feet, or something like that, because a girl said, uh, someone said, um, she ran away from home once, and she sprayed her shoes with perfume, right? So, it didn't leave a scent there, just, so they had no scent to pick up on. 
And I thought, well, would he know that, though? Would he know how to do that? Unless he was told to do that. But he didn't have his shoes on. So would he spray his feet with something before leaving? I don't think personally he'd have thought about that. Unless he was told by someone. Before you leave, spray some body deodorant on your feet or something. Yeah. I didn't like what uh, CP sent out to him about not trespassing. Now, I'm sorry. There's a lot of YouTubers out here, right? And a lot of being round. Not once have they been on their property. Not once. If there's anyone sneaking up and looking through their windows, I can assure you it's not YouTubers. Might be a TikToker. It's definitely not a YouTuber. They don't need to do that. They know the law. Right? I know when it's over here where a woman went missing uh, and I said she fell in the river. We had TikTokers going in the gardens of people who lived in the area. Right? And doing TikToks in people's gardens, searching around the sheds and everything. And that's out of order. So if anyone's been going up to the house, it's TikTok TikTokers, not YouTubers. Stop giving us a bad name. Do you think it was planned? Because as I said, it was planning. The plan was for him to go to his dad's in May anyway. When did he go missing? February. March, April, March. Three more months. Three months. Right? He would have been at his dad's. Yeah? Three months he would have been at his dad's. So, why plan something when you know in three months' time he's going to be at his dad's anyway? He could have just said to his dad, Look, I'm sorry, but... Uh, we need you to take him now, rather than me. Can you take him now? I'm sure his dad would have managed to get him to school for the last three months, or even got him into the new school. You can stand in the road. What do you mean by that, Robbie? <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we can stand in the road. They can't touch us. It's a public right away. But we can't go on the property. And YouTubers know this. But there's a lot of TikTokers who think they have the right to go up to people's doors and people's windows and film through their windows. No. It's not happening. But it did happen here in the UK. Was it last year? <coughs> <coughs> last year or something. <coughs> the proud foot are innocent, guys. Okay. Fair enough. No, he can't. He can't call him. Did you notice know, in that first uh, interview they did with the news, right? They never once mentioned his name. Either of them. And once I seen that, I said, that's a form of distancing themselves. From him. That's a form of distancing themselves from him. So, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> the proud folks are innocent, guys. Everyone's allowed to their opinion. We don't have to accept it, but I hate it. Like, we might have someone on it. It is all for the pride folks. You're thinking you think about pride folks. <laughs> Why some of the names come out about that name, pride folks, stinky folks, or something like that? Uh, it kills me when I see people putting these names up on the, in the chat and go, stinky folks, and stuff like that. I'm going, oh my God. Mom and stepdad don't like anything. No, they know some. Whether they actually. Brought any harm to the people, we don't know. But we do know they know something. We know that. 
So it's but when you see that guy then that video I was showing you, how he's trying to make out that the lights that you seen was from the road at the back. I'm thinking how come that house camera can pick up that light and the garbage truck lights, right? But it can't pick up a, a lad coming along in the pitch black with a little spotlight with a little torch. Right by him. But it can't pick him up. That doesn't make sense to me. Because he might have been 15, but believe it or not, when you're planning on running away, you're not thinking about your about ring doorbells or home security cameras. Who's gonna see me? Who's you know what I mean? You're not thinking like that, you're thinking I just want to get away from here. So, it's all twisted. The whole story is just so twisted. And it, they haven't helped themselves. It's like this guy who's video, they said, um, he said, the prayer folks never got the acknowledgement. Like safety, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, Seth didn't come out till like a week later, right? But he only came out because Nick Barris approached him at the visual, right? The mother and father come out when they found out that the police were scaling back the search. The mother and stepfather, I should say, sorry. Seth, mother and stepfather only came out to the interview, right? And in that one little video I just showed you, that clip, both of them had duper's delight, where they both gave that little smirk, that little smile. I think, some, as I said, I think something happened on the night. He's gone to sleep, fell asleep and passed. Because she said in that interview, I went in and woke him up. And he was gone. Why would you wake a child up if he isn't there? Yes, she did keep a car in the garage. But I think in the morning, she's phone set up. And he's telling her, get him in the car. Right? Um, I'll phone the police and then I'll also phone my mum who will come and meet you, right? Because he could say, if the police question him about, well, we noticed you phoned your mother as well. Yeah, well, it was just so that she could come to the house to um be repaid because I was still at work. You know what I mean? She's half hour away, I'm three and a half hours away. So I think if they met halfway, that's 15 minutes, she's handed him over to her. She's nipped him back to her house, put him in a trailer somewhere, right? Then from there, come back to her house, which would be, say, half six quarters. By seven o'clock, she's back at Katie's house. So that's easily done. So I think there was a handover. But I honestly believe he, he passed in his sleep. And I think that thought was when she was in the bedroom and she was having an argument with him and she's probably got hold of him and he's pulled away. And as he pulled away, he hit his head. And that's when she said she heard the thud, the thud of his head hitting the wall or the floor. He's probably thought, OK, my head's a bit sore. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, I'm going to bed. And he gets into bed, he goes to sleep. Falls and goes. Did mean she did you? No, I don't believe anything. And law enforcement are never going to say, yeah, never going to say whether they passed it or not. And someone was saying today that apparently, um, someone had come off a phone call, someone had just come off the phone call with Seth, and Seth had just told them that. Apparently, law enforcement have told them uh, CP and KP are being cleared. Right, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll believe that when we hear it. And if they click, and one woman said, if they are cleared, then I give up on murder investigations. I give up on crime, she said. But no, I'll never give up on crime, but because that's a crime itself. If they have, if the law enforcement have cleared them, that's a crime in itself. Because some happened. There's no, oh, I can't, it's just, just my head in. It's just my head in because it comes back to the fact there was no scent for the dogs. And that one dog who picked up the scent, that scent could have been laid there from Thursday or Friday or Saturday. We don't know how often Katie would lock him outside. She could have locked him outside on a Saturday. And he's probably thought, I'm going for a walk. And took himself for a walk. And took himself for a walk up to the construction site. <coughs> so that that scent could have been from days before. So I'm not paying a lot into that fact that that one dog picked up a scent. I'm not because even one of the neighbours from that um, complex, that housing where the Christmas is going on. They said on the Monday that they'd seen Sebastian in the area. They just hadn't seen him on the Monday. So they had seen him in that area before, just not on the Monday. So that's what I mean. That scent could have been left from any time. Anyway, it's been lovely chatting with you all. But it's two hours for 22.40. I've got to take that. What? What was that? They hide in good bad criminals. Pick him up. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Juicy jewels. I don't know. I it's the more complicated it gets. I say keep it simple. And you keep it simple, then you'll find this. Right? Where Katie is, keeps adding to her story, so she's not keeping it simple. She keeps adding. Yeah? Keep it simple. You'll find the truth. And we'll find him. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Well, I'm back again tomorrow night, same time, 8 p.m. UK time. So, I'll check into that ever missing child, missing five year old, that I was mentioned earlier. I'll check into that. But thank you all for that. Pray for Sasko. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being here. And if there's anyone on Twitter, I'll let me have a look. Yes, and you two on Twitter, can you please just give me a heart? Give me show me some love. Bye. And thank you all again. And don't forget. Hold on, just cut this down. If you liked and heard what you're seeing, please give it a like. And if you really want, subscribe, but I'm not forcing you. I'm not twisting your arm or anything, but if you want, please do. So, thank you all. all right. Till next time, yeah. Thank you all for being here. And hang on, I'll just go get this up, yes. And good night. Ooh.